The Sikorsky H-34 Choctaw flies out in War Thunder. Let's see what it's got. The H-34 started life as an upgraded and enlarged version of the earlier H-16 Chickasaw, featuring more carrying capacity, better range, and more sturdy construction. The helicopter first flew in 1954, and since it predated the use of turbine engines and helicopters, it had a large, conventional radial piston engine in its nose, which is what gives it that rounded, stubby shape in the front. It used the Wright Cyclone R-1820 engine, the same engine as used in the B-17 bomber and DC-3 airliner, with the drive shaft mounted diagonally, going up behind the pilot and the cockpit cabin into the main gearbox. This layout was in vogue for a time and presented a good compromise to fit a large engine while providing sufficient interior cargo space. The Choctaw was put into service by the US military as a utility helicopter, mostly used for transport and search and rescue, but a small number were also modified for other roles, such as medevac, anti-submarine warfare, and even as an improvised gunship during the early phases of the Vietnam War. The US military was still developing its helicopter doctrine, and it deployed the H-34 with several field kits to mount rocket pods, machine guns, grenade launchers, and even the AGM-12 bullpup missile. The combat record of these conversions is mixed, but it provided useful operational experience that contributed to later designs and helped refine early helicopter combat tactics. The gunship H-34s were phased out fairly quickly in favor of the H-1 Huey, but the H-34 itself was still highly successful in its utility roles. The helicopter was exported to over a dozen countries, and it flew in military service into the 1990s in some places. A small number are still flying today, mostly in civilian roles, usually with upgraded engines as a passenger transport. What we're looking at in War Thunder is the H-34, an attack helicopter in rank 5 of the American tech tree, with a battle rating of 7.7. .7. A version of the H-34 is also available for France with entirely different weapons, but this video is focusing on the American version, which was a reward from the Operation Shipyard event in 2019. As of 2024, this is currently one of the rarest helicopters in the game. Now, being a first-generation helicopter, the H-34 doesn't really get much for a combat system. You get a 10x optical zoom, and the pilot can use night vision, but that's about it. The loadouts are kinda weird. You can pick from three different weapon packages that correspond to some of those field modification kits I mentioned in the beginning, with the first two mounting different combinations of machine guns, cannons, and unguided rockets, and the third using a missile with a cannon pod. The more basic loadouts with the unguided rockets use low-caliber machine guns and the 20mm M3 cannon. These can do damage to open-top vehicles and light targets, but the real firepower with those kits is going to come from the unguided rockets. Now, the third weapons package uses an enormous 20mm Mark 11 cannon pod mounted on the left side of the fuselage, and the AGM-12B bullpup missile. The helicopter-mounted bullpup uses semi-automatic command line of sight guidance and has an effective range of over 7 or 8 kilometers depending on your altitude, along with a significant HE warhead that's strong enough to blow up almost anything in the H-34's BR range on a direct hit. The flight performance of the H-34 quite simply is pretty awful. That really shouldn't be a surprise though, considering the context of this thing being an early 1950s utility chopper powered by a World War II bomber engine. The collective and cyclic are both very sluggish, with a noticeable delay in input response, and overall, this helicopter feels very underpowered. It's got pretty average speed for a low-tier helicopter, once it gets moving anyway, but the acceleration and deceleration in level flight can be a lot slower than you might expect if you're coming into this from a smaller helicopter like the Huey. The tail rotor is also pretty unimpressive, with a few degrees of lag and an overall weak rotational force, even in a flat hover. In forward flight, rotational control is almost non-existent above around 130 kilometers an hour, 
So you're going to need to rely more on conventional banking cyclic turns in order to change the heading, which makes combat passes a bit more challenging. Something else that's important to mention, the Choctaw is heavy. If you let up too far on the cyclic, this thing is going to drop like a sack of bricks, and you might need quite a bit of practice to get a feel for its cyclic control in forward flight. The good news is that the H-34 is reasonably stable, which is kind of a side effect of the sluggish handling, but that makes it a pretty good gunnery platform once you get the hang for making small adjustments. When you take the H-34 out in a battle, you're pretty likely to get frustrated at first. And frustrated later. This helicopter is a huge and slow target without any armor and with its engine exposed right up in the front of its profile. This makes it extremely vulnerable, and even low-caliber rooftop guns from light tanks are a pretty serious threat if you get close. And sometimes, even if you're off at like one kilometer or longer, a lucky shot can cause just enough damage to slowly send you down into the ground. This combines with its weapon load of close-range rockets and cannons to create a very difficult situation, and the H-34 ends up being only marginally effective at rocket rush tactics or cannon passes. This is absolutely not a helicopter that you're going to go fly in and get three or four rocket kills in one pass early in the match unless you get incredibly lucky with a clustered group of enemy tanks that are both blind and deaf. They won't be though, so get ready to be stuck in a crossfire. However, despite being a bit of a struggle bus with the cannons and rockets, the H-34's secret weapon is the Bullpup missile. This thing is incredibly long range at this BR, and you can send it in from far outside the range of SPAA, with enemy aircraft being the only real threat if you want to make a standoff missile shot from like 6 or 7 kilometers away. There are two drawbacks though. First, the 10x optical zoom can be a bit of a limiting factor, and it makes aiming the missile a lot more difficult. And second, you only get one shot, hit or miss. Then, it's either flying in with the cannon pod or going back to land and reload. If you get into a pattern of land, take off, fire, land, take off, fire, it's possible to have good missions with this and get a few kills per match, but generally speaking, the gameplay loop with the H-34 is going to be to fly up, get one kill, two at most, with either of the weapon loads, and then get shot down by machine gun fire. Visually, in my opinion, this is a pretty ugly looking helicopter. The 3D model is well done, but it's just weird shaped, and the weapon packages add to a really bulky and ugly appearance. Landing isn't too hard, but just remember, it's heavy, and it's got a tail wheel. Rolling landings are a bit easier than hover landings, and don't forget to lock up the brakes since the H-34 loves to roll around a little bit after you touch down. To close out on the H-34 Choctaw. This helicopter gets an incredibly long-range missile relative to its battle rating, and it gets premium bonuses. However... It's a huge target, it's neither fast nor agile, and it's got no armor whatsoever. The final verdict on the H-34 is that this helicopter is effectively a one-trick pony, with the long-range bullpup missile being its only standout attribute. Beyond that, you've got to try pretty hard to like this thing, but at least it's at a very low BR. As always, thanks for watching.